Welcome back guys to Fire Emblem Radiant Dawn, where sheltering from the rain, we find ourselves under attack by the Disciples of Order, Ashera's army, and this man's owned or seemingly housing Oliver. Supposedly fought well long defeated, is still alive and kicking. With that said, we look to forward forward, converse and attack as we force our way into battle. I know this is battle, but you of all people I couldn't stand to lose. Oscar, don't you die. I will stay with you until the end. After all, we can accomplish anything if we work together. So Paragon Titania is now looking to get some nice stats because she needs speed rays because she can get doubled by these. Let's hope for a good level up. That is if she gets enough experience to do so. But considering she's level 4 currently, you kind of expected that. Right then, so getting strength, skill, and speed. Nice. I mean, so strength hasn't capped yet. That soul proc chance, that's just everything, really. And if I go here, what we can do is we can move Raphael into position. To smack down some guys apart from that. And if we stand exactly here, we can send Iconwards as well. Not enough to double that guy, despite his, what is it, 31 speed? Or 32, it's just not good enough. He needs an extra speed to be able to double those guys. But of course, we're aiming to send him well into the realms of battle. Right, apart from that, how do we deal with the rest of this? Essentially, if we don't put Boyd here, he's going to be attacked by... Well, Soren's going to be attacked by tons of guys. So we kind of need to take down the archer, but depends on us taking out this guy. Actually, we need to make a block anyway. I've got a plan. I've got a plan to make sure I take literally no damage from that archer. And that plan is just to put Nyla there. She can shift at any time and stay shifted. And if there's someone in range that can't be attacked back on, it's all fine. Guy won't move, we're all good. Take him out next go. So, we need to get moving onwards. And with that, should we just do this first? We could kill that guy with mist, or we could... Depends what we want to do. And we could heal up Oscar, but we can go past anyway. Maybe we'll let Oscar take that KO. Because, of course, Raphael can do four people around him. Which is very handy. Right, so we've got these guys here. If Oscar takes that one and goes up... So Titania can reach there. She can attack with the hand axe here, but it's probably best to keep with the swords, considering what's going on. If Mist goes to here and gets a nice mend going, of course Oscar heals up on each turn anyway. And then Oscar takes this KO, we should be good. As Soul Prox as well, he could have healed himself in the end. I kind of need you to proc soul against full HP enemies, though. That's the best option with your strength level. So we set them two up to each other. They should pump each other with, like, extra avoidance galore. And then Ike can come up. And smash down this guy. Right, we can talk to Tormod first of all, though. Tormod, it's been a while. Holy moly, you are absolutely huge! I feel puny next to you. That's because you are puny. Magic clearly doesn't give you much muscle tone. Oh, I suppose that's true. <laughs> Still, it works pretty well for winning battles. Actually, Tormod. What? Did you actually get smaller? Nah, you just can't see me properly because all of your blood gets pumped to your muscles away from your brain. A little touchy, Tormod? Whatever. We have work to do. All that said, let's work by just smashing this guy in the face. Could have attacked him from range actually. Space away would have been able to block something as well. That archer, the main worry of that archer is that he chooses to attack people 
down here. But we can just retreat everyone inwards. Once so you can attack with a meteor spell. We get Vika down here. And Molium just to here. Then he's forced to attack Nilo on the next turn. Get you to here, my dear. And then the others around. Essentially, we have a squadron that doesn't need to attack, but all the same, we can work with that. Oliver, Duke of Tanas, have a care. The last time you faced these enemies, you were defeated, humiliated, and your heaven slave trade was exposed. By the good graces of your fellow senators, you were saved from death and hidden away here. Behind the backs of the Apostle and the Prime Minister, we have kept you safe. Do not fail us. I understand, Senator Hetzel. Rest assured, the savages who dare set foot in my home a second time will be eradicated for the glory of our goddess. Ugly creatures deserve nothing but an ugly death. You will not regret the lovely mercy you've shown me. I can't remember his voice. But weird Oliver is weird. And look, the AI acts as we wanted to, or expected to. And to be honest, we probably could have kept it as it was and just let him range attack one of the two guys with range. Well, crossbow comes in. Not much hit chance. Because those two basically support pump each other up. They're a void. You can stick them on the front lines and they'll probably just survive forever. Right, no hit there, meaning we probably need to get a certain Soren to take care of that one. No soul proc and no double. Right, swords versus this guy. I doubt a double will be coming my way. We still get to take a fair bit of that HP down. And someone's challenging Ike straight off the bat. I don't think this will go well for you. Ike's basically going to be sent off towards the boss straight away as a one-man army. As his weapon level up, probably SS swords now. Alright, we're obviously going to have to take that sword master out so he doesn't run rampant in amongst the group. But if I move Ike to here, he should be able to block everyone as well. That guy's movement. Now that guy can reach Soren. I don't really see why I should care about that so much. So let's take out you from range. Can double this one. Iker level! Will he get rubbish stats? To be honest, another pump in speed would be great, because then I get to double everyone, and it is a pump in speed! With strength as well, and luck! Probably one of the main stats I want to raise at this moment is res. Defense isn't far from capping. Speed, not so far, but you know, actually, I don't know. Can't really see where it is. Skill and strength are a fair way to go, so let's hope they get nearer. Right, that guy should only be able to reach nowhere down here. Good. We can reach Soren, but we can work out other things from there. Of course, we can crossbow that guy, but it's not going to do much damage. The Steel Axe does a fair bit better, however. So I might be better off just attacking here. With the Steel Axe. Then removing Nyla from the group. And letting Soren step forward and leaving that axe guy for Ike. Basically, Soren can't double the guy, but can probably do other things. If he procs a depth, for example, it'll be amazing. Can't even take that guy out in one, that's a shame. Well, keep raising that fire level. It's just time to a Brock an ability. No. 
Well then, it's either Boyd gets the kill then, rather than Sorin. Will you cap your mag? Will you be as good as Sanaki? Sanaki has all of a sudden got like lots of stats, really, when you look at it compared to the others. So now it's up to us to do a little bit of extra poking. These guys don't need healing, so to be honest them, depending on how we arrange things here, we get Raphael to there. Yeah, that'll work. Let's floret this guy down. Basically put it in a killing range for Titania. We'll leave you there for now. That works fairly nicely. It's basically the horse squad. Titania can heal as well. I mean... Mist can heal as well. Oh, we need to move you out of the way, do we? That's not a problem. Morlim, get back. And then we'll attack with a Silver Lance here. Just because that means that Oscar's probably half the way to doing the damage needed. No soul prop, though. Right, so if he moves to here, then Raphael can boost them all up again. It leads for some interesting scenarios, doesn't it? Alright then, Titania, can you break this one? Can't double, but you never know what you might get. I was wondering if you could do it with the Silver Axe as a whole, but let's go with the Sword. Keep raising that skill. No Soul Proc. But enough to level up again. Will it be a speed level again? Will it even be a good level? Oh, rubbish. My head falls dejectedly. We got speed before and then we were punished. Punished by the gods. Alright then, if I go to here instead, or oh, it depends actually, I'd probably open myself up to attacks by spellcasters if I do that. But to be honest, our avoidance is good. And I can silver lance this guy down. I can't floret him down. May as well do it for the experience, mind you. It's all experience in the end, and you guys can stand next to each other. Then Oscar can step forward once he's taken this guy down and move into the spot. Oh, now you proc soul. Basically, if they proc soul, we get to move up fast. Will Oscar get a level that makes that Titania level even out a little bit? Skill, speed, res. Well, with that extra speed, he might be able to double again. You never know. But we kind of need some extra strength. They're both excelling in different things right now. I don't like it. That guy should be in range of Ike. Brilliant. Depending on if he moves or not. And if I'm right in saying, we should be able to move you up. In case we need to get to that door. We can even try to attack. Yeah, that's not going to go very well. Alright then. Well, let's just move up a little bit based on the fact we're probably going to expect some enemies from behind. But we know which ones we're fighting with. Crossbow from range. Nothing to worry about. Oscar will heal that up himself, in fact. Now, spellcasters are a bit more worrisome. Remember to proc soul and get enough speed so you can double again. That means you'll do more damage than Titania. And we're facing off lances versus swords as well, but... Them standing next to each other means they've got all the dodge chance in the world. That's all theirs. Then the rest is for Ike. Ike is going to take massive lumps out of the enemy here, isn't he? Well, he doesn't seem to want to proc Aether. But 
but he'll continue his ridiculous advance. Boyd wants to get in on that, but first of all, you got to deal with the treasure place. Even with your extra hit chance, sir. You failed. No soul proc. We need to kind of get through to some of these spellcasters here, so how can we go about digging our way through? Yeah, this is the Ike show in a second, but then it kind of is anyway. Oh, well, Colossus Prox, meaning this guy's finally down. Also meaning that the other guys can now challenge Boyd. If they so desire, anyway. Everyone's coming. Yep, challenging Boyd. Boyd should be able to double the rest of these then. Yep. As he levels up to level 9, gaining strength and some resilience. I'm guessing you're going to stay standing where you are. Yes, you are. So now it's up to everyone else to make their advance. Alright, that's the first spellcaster slot I could get in here. So if I attack there to take a little bit of HP down, I guess Titania will probably be able to axe this guy. And again, bring it back. Center behind Raphael. Do I go to here? No. I should go all the way back if I can, to be honest. We're not going to advance far either way. Alright, it all depends on how they do attacking-wise now. So one axe blow will easily destroy this guy. We may as well just go for the stone pole axe and use up that charge. Another level for Titania. Will it be another terrible level up? Oh no, Titania! You're failing me. Extra strength is great, but we need more than one stat a level. Let's go to here. Well, strength's capped now as well, so your most prominent raise stat is gone. Right, we can double over here though, which is great news. We'll have to be with the Silver Lance though, however. You know what? I probably can do it with a bow. Yep, that'll be 38. Doesn't keep me in range of Titania's support though, so my avoid rating has gone down. It's nice to use the bow every so often. I'll avoid it anyway. The two of them together though, because they control so much of the weapon spectrum, is quite nice. Alright then, Goldrelard is. Essentially. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Alright? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I could walk in and out from there, and it would work perfectly. So, with that said, we floret again. I could get rid of the spellcasters and just leave them at melee, but the only problem with this is... Well, weapon level up, nice. Is that we kind of leave things... It's Arc Thunder, Arc Wind. I don't know how we want to go about doing this. Hand Axe won't take him out, which would have been great. Silver Axe it is then. Tanya, you had one good level and you failed us to the rest. We could take a lot of spell damage. 
And of course, a certain someone won't be able to attack back. That guy has barely any hit chance, but he has the possibility of critting. Saying that, there's no crit chance there. I can't kill either one of them. So what might be better then is to try and finish off you. We can't do that either. Ah well, I guess it's a double chance for Soul to proc and if we go killer, it's killer. So we might crit. We might soul. We give ourselves better chances. Or no chance. He might turn and retreat, to be honest. That does mean that Oscar stands to get whacked a fair bit. But next turn, we're going to send Ike in to craziness. Join me then for more Radiant Dawn as we continue our horse-based advance on this side, which is going fairly well with the vigorous strategy. And break through this door into the treasure room. And basically, start Ike versus the world over here. Bye-bye. <laughs>